Welcome back. So what we're going to do then in this video is practice a little bit what is found in your textbook about methods to approximate the depth of some of these structural elements that we've been covering. Now, I want to be clear about this. The methods that we're going to cover right now are approximate and they're simply meant to come up with an adequate guesstimate about the depth of certain elements. It is not how structural engineers do it, by no means, okay? But at least it gives you an idea of how to select certain sizes, gives you an idea about building uh, ceiling cavities, that sort of stuff, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to use the kind of the same setup we have here with grid lines and distances and lengths and spans. We're gonna look at coming up with the approximate depth of K joists, girders, if there are W sections, and beams if they're W sections. Okay, so we'll do it in this order. Joists, beams, girders. Okay? All right, for K joists. K joists typically are gonna be set up for the purposes of this example and as it shows in your textbook, where floor joists are typically spaced at two to four feet. That is in metric units approximately 600 millimeters to uh, 1.2 meters in spacing, or if they're on the roof, four to six feet in spacing. So that's approximately 1,200 millimeters by 1.8 meter, or 1,800 millimeters. Now, this, uh, let's call them American spacing, right? They're gonna be a bit different in Canada, especially for the roof, right? Because in Canada, we have to account for snow loads a lot more, so this might actually become smaller. But for now, for the purposes of these exercises, these are acceptable. Okay, so the rule of thumb is this, and where did I find this? Appendix B of your textbook, that is the third edition of Building Construction. Page approximately 958 at the top, okay? So the rule of thumb that you're given is if you're trying to come up with the depth, the depth of your K-joist, you take the span of a K-joist and divide it by 20, right? And then you get the, span, the depth of it. And the way it works is that if the span you're using is in feet, then the spacing you're gonna get is in feet. And if you want it in inches, then you have to multiply by 12 to get it in inches. Okay? Now in our case, and likely what you're dealing with is gonna be metric units. So in our case, let's see what is the span of our open web steel joist, our K joist. What we have here is 7.6 millimeters. Okay? Sorry, 7,600 millimeters or 7.6 meters. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set up the same fraction. We're going to divide by 20. And depending on whatever number we put on top, those units will give us the units of the spacing. And because metric units work better this way, right, if you put a unit at the top, it's easier to convert it to the different unit here because it's that using the decimal system. There's no multiplication by 12 with the imperial, uh, that you get with the imperial system. But anyways, I'm talking too much, let's do this. Let's do this in millimeters, okay? If we do 7,600, the span in millimeters, and divide by 20, what we get is 380 millimeters. That is the vertical depth. So again, the units of the depth are the same units that you put in here. So what that means is that, say if I did it in meters, 7.8 meters divided by 20, I get 0 0.38 meters which means that if you wanted to convert this from meters to millimeters, you'd have to do that in order to get 380 millimeters. Okay? That's simple. Just divide by 20 for your K-joists. Okay? Whatever that span is. Next, let's do beams, W beams. Right, because beams, again, could be an alternative to using open web steel joists as secondary structural elements, right? Instead of using open web steel joists everywhere, 
you would use beams everywhere. Okay? The rule of thumb for beams is the span divided by 22. Again, I, I got that, the same location, Appendix B of the third edition of your textbook, approximately page 958 at the top. It works the same way. Whatever units you put here in the span of your beam are going to be the units that you get here as an answer. So if your span is in feet, the answer is in feet. If your span is in inches, the answer is in inches. If your span is in feet and you want your answers in inches, you take this answer and multiply it by 12 like we did here. Okay? So let's practice. We're going to do it with our metric units. Let's say if the span of these beams is 7,600 millimeters, and I divide by 22, what I get as an answer is approximately 345. Now, I could write a whole bunch of numbers after this too. But really, when it comes to depths, if you go anything past millimeters, uh, it's unnecessary. Okay? So that gives you an approximate depth. Now, if I did this in meters, the answer here would be in meters. Okay? But this is the approximate depth. If you chose to use beams here instead of open web steel joists. Okay. Now, let's try approximate depth of girders. And in terms of girders, uh, the rule of thumb is this. Oh, and sorry, I think this actually should be moved from here to here, right? Typical approximate spacing of beams is 8 to 12 feet. And by that, it means it's going to be, for 8 feet, it's uh, 2,400 millimeters approximately, and 12 feet is 3,600 millimeters approximately. Now, if you want to figure out girders, the depth of girders, that's these folks here, right? Those are the beams that support other beams or the beams that support other joists, open web steel joists. The rule of thumb is the span divided by 16. So in our case here, the span is here, right? That's the span of this beam, 7,600 millimeters or 7.6 meters. It's set up the same way again, where whatever units you put here in the span are going to be the units that you get here in the depth for it. So let's try it in our case. I'm going to use millimeters because that's, I think, what you're given. 7,600 millimeters divided by 16 gives us 475 millimeters. Okay, so that's the depth of this girder. Now here's something important, okay? Your girder must always be deeper than whatever beam it's supporting. That's what I'm trying to say here, greater than a beam's depth. So if these beams, if it has beams going into the girder, not open web steel joists, but beams, this girder must always be deeper than those beams. If for whatever reason this calculation gives you a depth of a girder that's less than these beams going into it, if you're using beams, you have to make it bigger. Okay? It must always be bigger for our purposes. Okay? All right, that's it. It's that simple. Now, if you go and check out on Appendix B, uh, the same location, and look further down, you'll also find the rules of thumb for columns. The rules of thumb for columns are based on tributary areas, which I believe you've learned about. Okay? It's based on the area that they support. It's, you can have a look at it. It's a good way to do it. Okay? If it gives an area, then you pick a certain size of uh, W sections for your columns. Uh, have a look at it, and if you have any questions, ask away. I want to thank you for your time, and uh, take care.